John Carroll here with my BFF Duke bringing you this week's word of encouragement and I'm going to start out Duke what do you have that's encouraging for everybody okay cuteness cuteness I, I can see how that could be encouraging to people uh, do you have anything else all right Duke's got nothing Duke's got nothing so I guess it's up to me and when I look around I, I see the news I see what's going on I got nothing either I really don't and so what do we do when we when we really need encouragement we go to God's Word go to God's Word so I'm gonna look at Psalm 102 for a couple minutes this morning and I see that uh, it starts out it has one of those psalm titles which is pretty helpful sometimes because this one is about a prayer of an afflicted man when he is faint and pours out his lament before the Lord. Hmm, that sounds kind of relevant. Uh, sometimes we're feeling kind of faint and uh, we're ready to pour out our laments to the Lord as well. And what does he say? He says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call, answer me quickly, for my days vanish like smoke, my bur bones burn like glowing embers, my heart is blighted and withered like grass, I forget to eat my food. Because of my loud groaning I am reduced to skin and bones, I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lay awake, I have become like a bird alone on a roof. All day long my enemies taunt me. Those who rail against me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears. Because of your great wrath, for you have taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like the evening shadow. I wither away like grass. You think you got problems. Listen to what this guy is going through. That's pretty bad. He's got all kinds of troubles in his life. Let's look back again at verses 1 and 2. He says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. Hear me, Lord. Hear me, Lord. He's crying out to God. And is there perhaps a hint of doubt in this too? I kind of sense that. He, don't hide your face. I, I kind of think that you're you're kind of hiding from me now and and so he turns to the Lord and he's looking to God well we all get flustered we all get discouraged in life maybe not these kind of problems but we all have those difficulties and sometimes that can become our mindset right that becomes our mindset uh, one frustrating thing just leads into another First, you get some really bad news, and that takes you down a, a few notches. And then something big breaks in your house. You, you just put laundry in the washer, and all of a sudden there's, there's a leak coming out of it, and, and now what? Now what? That's a big problem. Or your refrigerator goes. Not in the summer, please. At least if it's winter, I could take it out and put some things in the, in the snow for a little while or whatever. But no, it has to happen in the summer. And, and it's just one thing after, and then you stub your toe <laughs> it, and it's just like everything is going wrong in your life and, and it gets discouraging because discouraging things tend to multiply they do so what do we do when we're at our wits end like that we need to change our perspective change our perspective and here's the change verse 12 he says but you O Lord sit enthroned forever your renown endures through all generations god is in control that's the thing that he's come to that's the idea that he's oh wow there it is god's in control as he says here he's been in control for a very long time as well and so that should be calming that should be calming hey all these bad things that are going on in our society maybe in me personally God's in control, and he has been for a long time. Um, also, his renown, his, his fame, his reputation 
uh, as it says here, endures. It endures. What does that tell us? Well, when we zoom in on our problems, God's renown, his greatness disappears. It disappears, doesn't it? It, it, it just leaves our thoughts and, and it leaves us in discouragement because we're not thinking about God and God being in control and, and who he is. Then he continues on, verse 13. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. Now in this verse, the you is emphatic. So what is he saying here? You, you will arise. So it takes us off of me and it looks to you, really emphasizing that, that it's God here that's in, in charge and in, in, in doing things. And so that tells us that our focus really needs to be on God and, and not on our own problems. And what does he also say here? He says that God is compassionate. You, Lord, are compassionate. Oh, yeah, I should have remembered that. You're compassionate, Lord, and, and you love us. God does love us. He's compassionate. He's concerned about us. Then he continues on, verse 14. For her stones, the Zion stones, are dear to your soul. It makes them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. So God was concerned about the people of Jerusalem way back when the psalmist was writing this. And I think that tells us that God is concerned about us today as well. He is. Otherwise, he wouldn't have put it in there. Now, as we have seen, God is in control. And God is compassionate, both of those things. And here we see that he's going to appear in glory. And that is a prediction of Jesus. That's a prediction of Jesus. Jesus is going to come in glory. He's going to appear in glory. And that gives us hope. That gives us hope. God's in control. He's compassionate. He's going to appear in glory. He's coming. Jesus is coming back. He's going to put things right. All the problems in this world he will put right. Next verse, verse 17. He says, He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. That is encouraging as well. That should be very encouraging for us. God is going to respond to your prayer. He will respond to your prayer. So what does that tell us? Don't fret. Just pray. Pray and, 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 and look to God for that. Then verse 18. He says, let this be written for a future generation that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. So God is going to do praiseworthy things for generations to come. Generations to come. He's going to do things that we can praise him for. And that individual people along those uh, generations can praise him for as well. And so we're one of those generations. We can praise the Lord right now as well despite all the difficulties that are going on. Think about things that he has done. Think about how he is in charge. Think of his compassion. Think that Jesus is coming again. We can praise him for that. So here's a key thought. Here's a key thought. Praise is the language of encouragement. Praise is the language of encouragement. So you're feeling discouraged now, you're feeling down, you've stubbed your toe, you know, you, maybe your dog got sick or something like that. Start praising God. It will encourage you. It will bring a whole new perspective to your life. It will get you thinking off your own problems and thinking about what God is going to do in your life to solve. So that's our word of encouragement for today. Um, for Duke, this is John Carroll. Have a great day.